Hello and welcome to Fund Finance Friday Industry Conversations. My name is Leah Edelbaum and I'm Special Counsel in Kedwalader's Fund Finance Group. Today I'm joined by Jeff Nagel. He's a partner in Kedwalader's finance practice and he is also a key player in the LIBOR transition. He's acting as counsel to the ARC as well as to the LSTA in connection with the LIBOR transition. Hi Jeff, how are you? Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Leah. Great to be here. Thanks. So, Jeff, we've been following the LIBOR transition from the very beginning. We've been publishing updates in Fund Finance Friday. Before we get to the really um, big stuff that's happening right now, can you give us a sense of some of the things that have gone on already this year that have made a big difference in the transition? Uh, sure. So it, it's been a uh, exciting and uh, interesting year for for LIBOR transition so far, and it's continuing with with new news coming out this summer. Um, as many of our uh, viewers or readers may recall, there was a uh, pretty significant announcement back in March of this year. Uh, the regula uh, regulatory authorities in the UK announced that for uh, most currencies of LIBOR, uh, the LIBOR would be stopping or ceasing to be representative as of the end of this year. Um, for US dollar LIBOR, that date was extended out to June 30th, 2023, except for the, the rarely used one week and, and two month um, tenors of USD LIBOR. Uh, so that was a very important date. Um, it started uh, the process for many, uh, many banks to be doing their transition. Um, important to recall, however, that the March 5th announcements themselves did not actually trigger transition under most documents. They just either started the process of negotiation or um, informed the market when the actual replacement for LIBOR will occur, which will be uh, right after December 31st of this year or June uh, 30th of 2023 for, for USD LIBOR. So given these announcements and given the, the, given the changes, are we're still seeing many lenders originate LIBOR-based loans nonetheless? That's right. So, so where we are in the process is, is we're not quite at the active transition stage yet, although there's, we're almost there for, for um, Sterling LIBOR. Um, so there are LIBOR loans still being issued today. Um, there's a couple of things going on in the market impacting the timing for when new LIBOR issuance will be stopping. Um, one uh, important bit of guidance was um, announcements that were made by the U.S. banking regulators uh, at the end of November of last year, um, instructing regulated or informing regulated entities that there will be a safety and soundness issue if they are continuing to issue new LIBOR contracts um, after the end of 2021 and also recommending that they stop issuing new LIBOR contracts as soon as practicable. Um, there's another uh, recommendation out there that, that folks should be aware of. The ARC itself recommended no new LIBOR contracts for business loans after June 30th of this year, and, and we're in July. Um, so combining those two together, you have a couple of things. Uh, one that many institutions um, are planning to cease putting LIBOR into new loans within the next month or two as part of their regular business. Um, what we've, the, the phrase that's been used um, across the, the, you know, a variety of clients is SOFR first, uh, trying to have SOFR first as opposed to LIBOR for, for new deals. Um, that's an important date. Uh, however, there are some even harder stops out there to be aware of. Um, Sterling LIBOR had a stop date as of April 1st of this year, which has already passed for any UK regulated entities. Um, so we are seeing uh, replacements for Sterling LIBOR in new documents being done today. Um, there are also hard stops on our horizon for other, um, for other LIBOR as well. Um, the end of 2021, um, Euro, Sterling, Yen, and Swiss franc LIBORs are going to cease being representative or cease altogether. 
Uh, so that's obviously a very hard stop, both for legacy and for new transactions. And the US banking regulators, where they said, as soon as practicable, they've, they've drawn a very um, firm line in the sand for the end of 2021, after which uh, new contract origination on, on LIBOR is going to be problematic. So um, regulated banks here in the US won't, won't be doing that at all after the end of this year. So we, we received a lot of guidance and a lot of deadlines, but where are we now in the transition? What are you seeing in current deals in terms of the use of these um, replacement benchmarks? Sure. So Sterling is, is kind of the, uh, the leading indicator here. Um, as I mentioned, the April 1st date is driving the, the market to adopt replacements for uh, Sterling LIBOR. Um, Sonia has emerged as the uh, widely being seen as a replacement for um, Sterling LIBOR. Um, it is the rate that, that's recommended by the UK regulators. Um, the Sterling, the Sonia that we're seeing, there's two different flavors, basically the Daily Simple, which is kind of the US version of Sonia that's being used in many documents. And then there's the compounded and arrears version of Sonia which you will find in LMA documents and, and a number of um, European and, and non-US institutions are, are trending towards. Um, so that's making its way into documents today, either as the rate that is being used at inception or through a mechanism to have a replacement from um, LIBOR into, uh, into Sonia on an automatic basis or rate switch basis in the near future. Um, for US, uh, for, for non-US dollars, um, there are risk-free rates for euros and yen, um, that is Esther and uh, Tonar. Um, however, there are non-LIBOR IBORs that will be continuing to be published after the end of this year. So Eurobor for euros and Tibor for yen. Um, and so we are, we're actually seeing a lot of Eurobor and Tibor still being used in, in documentation today, and those are not rates that are ending at the end of this year. Um, and bringing back home here to US dollars, um, we'll, we'll talk about probably the biggest news here in, in a couple of minutes, but the other rates that, that we are currently uh, seeing active usage uh, in our daily simple SOFR as a replacement for uh, US dollar LIBOR, uh, seeing that primarily in bilateral facilities. Um, one bank with uh, which we work, I believe his mention they already have upwards of 500 daily simple SOFR um, bilateral loans on the books. Um, haven't really seen a big uptake of simple SOFR in the syndicated space yet. Um, there, there was a very, uh, there was the announcement a couple months ago that Ford will be doing over a $15 billion SOFR facility closing in September. Uh, but apart from that, we haven't seen a lot of SOFR issuance. Um, I, I think the, uh, the commentary on that is, is many folks are waiting for term SOFR, which we'll get to in a second. Um, the, the other uh, rate that we are seeing make an appearance are, are credit sensitive rates, uh, particularly Bisbee, the Bloomberg uh, short term bank yield uh, index. Um, there's been some regulatory announcements within the last um, you know, month or two that have um, encouraged um, lending institutions to use SOFR. Uh, as opposed to Bisbee, but Bisbee is still a, a viable option for, um, for many uh, lending institutions. So we've seen some, some Bisbee lending. So I guess let's get to the big news. What is the big news that we are waiting for that could be, I guess, announced imminently? Yeah, so, so, so term so far has kind of, um, you know, from for many, many months amongst the LIBOR transition community, term so far has been the, the gold ring that people have been hoping for. Um, it is a risk-free rate. Um, it is um, the underlines for so far are very robust, the so far market. Um, and importantly for the lending market, term so far will contain many of the features that LIBOR had notably the, the term featured uh, a one or three or six month uh, tenor uh, that, that people have been used to using for loans uh, based upon LIBOR for many years. 
Um, it looked towards the beginning of this year like term SOFR may not be a reality in time for transition. Uh, but there's been news, uh, increasingly positive news over the past couple of months around term SOFR. Um, the ARC came out in April and May um, and announced um, that it had selected an administrator for term SOFR, S uh, CME, um, and that the ARC was prepared to recommend market indicators were met. Uh, so now we're just waiting for there to be a robust trading market for SOFR that will allow the ARC to feel comfortable recommending a term SOFR for usage. Um, a big component of that was the uh, CFTC's uh, Market Risk Advisory Committee, the MRAC, uh, came out, um, I think this was back in June, and recommended a switch in interdealer swap trading conventions from LIBOR to SOFR uh, as of July 26th. Um, and so that is a, a monumental kind of um, guidepost on getting the market indicators because that will be driving a lot of um, SOFR swap activity to provide the underpinnings for the ARC recommendation. Uh, it's, it's expected to provide the uh, necessary market depth in order for the ARC to make that term SOFR recommendation. Uh, the ARC, um, there was an announcement on July, or July 26th, so Monday of this week, two days ago, from when I'm uh, making this uh, um, uh, taping, uh, saying that they are seeing uh, robust pickup uh, in the swap, interdealer swap uh, markets, and are very positive about being able to make a, an announcement about the recommendation of term SOFR in the very near future. Um, the, the key quote um, from um, a couple of months ago was that they were expecting to make that announcement within the matter of days, not weeks after July 26th. So I think we're all waiting around uh, for an imminent announcement that term SOFR uh, can be used. Um, a couple of other um, good points about term SOFR. Uh, the ARC came out this month. Uh, saying that business loans would be in scope for use of term SOFR, which is great for the fund finance space. So term SOFR is, is a rate that, that could be used for most of the loans in this market. Um, and the ARC also um, prepared recommended conventions for term SOFR so that, so that counterparties could use term SOFR. So all of these are, are great, great news for the uh, term SOFR aficionados out there. And, and the bottom line is that um, we have every expectation that the term SOFR um, may well be available for use in, in business loans very soon, um, maybe, maybe within you know, a matter of, matter of days. And that um, is expected to assist the transition away from LIBOR once term SOFR is available. Thank you so much. And the one question that we, we get a lot from either our, our readers or from our clients is, every time we get an announcement, if you have the ARC hardwired language or, or your particular bank's version of it, what do the announcements mean for your credit agreement? Right, so, so what, with the announcement from March 5th, it was a benchmark transition event, um, but the way the ARC, standard ARC hardwired fallback language works is that after a benchmark transition event, you need an actual benchmark replacement date for LIBOR to be replaced. And so the benchmark replacement date for um, US dollars is not going to occur for almost all the tenors, all the relevant tenors until June 30th of 2023. So under the hardwired approach, your actual transition would not occur until that date unless you use an early opt-in election or unless there's a proactive remediation prior to then. Um, the ARC announcement that it is recommending term SOFR means that once you get to that waterfall, if term SOFR is the top level of your waterfall, which it is under almost all waterfalls that I've seen, uh, that means you can stop there. So when you do transition, uh, you don't have to look any further. You now have an ARC recommended term SOFR. You have an ARC recommended um, uh, spread adjustment that was crystallized on March 5th, 
and is not going to change. So you have your answer as to what your credit agreement is going to go to under under um, under the hardwired approach. Under the amendment approach, uh, there's still a requirement that the borrower and the agent typically uh, come to an agreement on what the rate will be. And then that agreement will go out to the rest of the syndicate. You know, normally what we've seen is a, is a five business day negative consent. Um, but the mechanics are there in the fact that term sofer is going to be a recommended rate by the ARC um, may indicate that many of these facilities, the borrowers and the lenders will pick, uh, will pick term sofer. Jeff, thank you so much for your time and for your expertise. Thanks everyone for tuning in. That was Jeff Nagel, finance partner at Kedwalader, counsel to the ARC and to the LSTA. Please get in touch with us if we can answer any questions. Thanks for joining us. The material and information contained in the podcast is for general informational purposes only. Any use of the audio within this podcast without the express consent of Cadwallader is prohibited. Quotes from this podcast may not be used without the express permission of the speaker.